ship gropes through the ice fields of the Arctic. The expedition, with American and Canadian cooperation, seeks an open water route across the top of the continent, Henry Hudson's fabled Northwest Passage. There are no fables in the objective of Dr. Eiji Hidaka, the expedition zoologist. Ashore with two companions to survey the life of the region, they approach an Eskimo village, innocently unaware of the fabulous experiences ahead of them. I'd hate to live in cold like this all the time. These people have developed special adaptations, Mr. Ayagi. Uh huh? Well, I hope my cameras don't freeze. Welcome. Welcome. We have heard of your expedition, Doctor. Welcome to Okolod. Welcome. Make an interesting picture, Mr. Ayagi. Russian? Don't you think so? Yeah. What are Russian jets doing here? The border is almost a thousand miles to the west. I hope the shore party returns soon, sir. I don't like the looks of things. Are the ice conditions changed? No, sir. Just a feeling. Planes. Hmm. There they are, above the port beam. They'll notify air defense. marked yourself no trespassing, but you shouldn't stop a guy for trying. Maybe it's cold outside. It's right, gorgeous. You gotta thaw out. Now, there's a South Sea Island picture at the rec hall tonight. Tropical shadows, dulcet sea ripples, muted mandolins, and me. With popcorn yet. Would you do me the honor? Maybe. If you keep your buttery claws to yourself, remember that airmen don't drool. They obey. Excuse me, Captain. Yes, the general. Yes, sir. Make it fast, Hopkins. This just came in. Thank you. What is it, Captain? General, I thought you'd better see these reports. They just came in, sir. Has this been confirmed? Yes, sir. We just intercepted a message from the Japanese explorer ship Chitteramaru. Thank you, Captain. What is it? What's wrong? Four UFOs headed toward our missile sites. Lovell, I want direct contact with air defense immediately. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, have there been similar reports from other command posts? No, sir. Well, ride herd. Yes, sir. Clark. Yes, sir. I want you to get me General Arnold in Washington pronto. Right away. General, we've made contact with their defense. This is General O'Neill. Do you read me? Yes, sir. This is Hawk Leader Foster. Affirmative. Foster, four unknowns have been traced to your area. Altitude 4,000 feet, flying north, northeast. A latitude of 84.27. East longitude 176.58. You will intercept and conduct them to base. If they resist, you will use plan Skylark and destroy. Roger. Russian planes are now American. Trouble, huh? Real trouble, yes. Well, Simpson? Still no reports of unknown from our other command post, sir. Could be their planes have flown off course, General. It's happened before. Perhaps. Washington, sir? The White House? The President. He was with General Arnold when the... Uh... No need to explain it, Lieutenant. O'Neill speaking. Yes, Mr. President. Yes, sir, that's exactly the way it is. No, sir, only if the unknowns resist. Yes, sir, I quite agree with you. Yes, sir, I will call you directly. Red alert. Identify, identify. What is your nationality and flight plan? If you do not acknowledge, we will open fire. 
Identify. Identify. Answer immediately. What is your nationality and flight plan? All planes? Clear for action. Fire! A nuclear bomb could cause a blast like that. You're right. It was one of those jets we saw. And here I stand staring at that cloud when I ought to be taking a shot at the ear. Huh. A great news photographer I am. Yes. Do you realize what would happen, though, should that cloud come toward us? Low megaton atomic bomb has exploded. Latitude 78.97, longitude 86.32. The other bogey is now headed toward the Siberian border, awaiting further orders. Thank you, Sergeant. Lovell, tell Foster to recon and photograph the destruction. The other interceptors are to pursue the enemy. Yes, sir. Still no reports from Strategic Command. It appears to be a single incident. Do you regard a nuclear explosion as a single incident, Lieutenant? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, uh, no, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. General. Air defense reports the Japanese ship Chitaramaru and the surrounding Eskimo villages are beyond fallout. Well, thank God for that. Try and raise the Chitta tomorrow. I want to speak to the captain. Yes, sir. General, may I ask how serious you think this is? Well, there's no point in guessing. We'll have to play it by ear. Whatever happens. the need for restraint, sir. Yes, sir, we'll stay on red alert until we receive further orders. Goodbye, sir. Well, the Russians insist their planes flew off course accidentally. Electronic interference. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. I mean, they couldn't have mistaken the area. I bet they were photographing our missile locations. Oh, one plane maybe, Lieutenant, but not four. No, headquarters believes they did fly off course accidentally. Then realized what had happened and fired on our planes in order not to be forced down. Oh, our boys have done it on occasion, Lieutenant. We all know that. Clark. Yes, sir. You had any luck in raising that Japanese ship? No, sir. No air defense since you ordered them back. Our communication system is blacked out. The explosion, sir? It's unlikely. There must be something else causing the interference. Keep on trying, Clark. Yes, sir. <sighs> this just doesn't make sense. Love will get more interceptors up there. I want to find out what's going on. Yes, sir. Oh, Sergeant Embers. Yes, General? Would you give me a cup of coffee, please? Black, no sugar. And you better make another pot. It looks like a long day. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Chuko? I don't know, Doctor. I can't reach the ship or anyone else. I can't get anything but static. 
<clears throat> Interference from the bomb doctor? I would imagine so. We'd better start back at once. Right. Goodbye, Chief. Thank you. Goodbye. Wait. Please, Dr. Hidaka. You look, you take his very old stone about cloud of death. It's a primitive carving of a proto -Kilonian. A what? An ancestral turtle, like the leatherback. Tell me, Chief, is there a legend connected with this? Yes. Old story of death and evil things that happened. Of Gamera! <laughs> Gamera, you call it? This Gamera is obviously an object of terror. There's a peculiar pattern in the background. Looks almost like waves, doesn't it? Mm. Let's ask the chief. Is that what they are? I do not know. Only that it is evil and very frightening. I see. I have a feeling that this is something very significant. Isn't that pattern symbolic of something else? Yes, I believe it is. This is not the usual way that Eskimos depict the sea. But what else could it be? I mean, turtles live in water, so that would make sense. Well, perhaps you were right. Still, I think there's much more to this than meets the eye. The cloud is spreading. But why should any of those planes be carrying an atomic bomb? They don't trust each other. That's why they stay on the alert. Look there. Frequencies appear to be jumped. Don't forget it. Abandon ship. We try Abandon ship. Quick, get out of here. Just Are you insane? Clear the bridge. Uh, Abandon ship. Forget the hell. Get out of here. Hurry. Turkey, keep going. Hurry. General O'Neill. We've been able to contact Captain Foster, sir. He reports the Chitter Amaro destroyed. All that remains is a huge crack in the ice and debris. What? No sign of survivors, sir. Now, Foster said that ship was beyond the area of the explosion. Now, what happened? Well, sir, I, I... I don't exactly know how to explain his report. It's just that... Well, sir, he says... All right, Lovell, this is no time to get tongue-tied. Now, let's hear it. Captain Foster insists that after he was separated from his group, he saw a giant turtle walking away from the area where the Chitteramaru was last sighted. A huge creature, 150, maybe 200 feet tall. He circled the area to take another look, but it was gone as if it had flown away. Well, now, now that's what he says, sir. The captain's kidding. A giant turtle? He must have been working too hard. That's one we haven't heard before. All right, Sergeant, get back to your duties. Yes, sir. Now, look, Lovell, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but we're going to find out. Now, I want a full report on this hallucination. And I also want a helicopter over that disaster area to see if there are any survivors. Maybe some people ashore, whatever happened, happened. Yes, Sergeant sir. Embers. Yes, sir. I want you to contact General Yarasaka in Tokyo. Now inform him of what has happened, that we're doing all possible to rescue survivors. Also, General Arnold in Washington. Tell him it is absolutely imperative that he meet me. Coded instructions will follow. Yes, sir. A giant turtle. And now, back to the second half of the discussion and your host, Mr. Standish. Hello, I'm J.G. Standish, along with my guests. The noted zoologist, Dr. Emery Contraire, author of The Factual Basis of Legends. And on my right, this network's genial science editor, author of such books as Non-Science or Nonsense, Jules Manning. Our subject, the giant turtle Gamera. 
certainly one of the most controversial subjects of our time. Dr. Contraire, earlier in our program, you stated the belief that Gamera could, in fact, exist, while Mr. Manning disagreed rather vigorously. And I still do. The theory of Dr. Hadakas is pure science fiction, a figment of an unbridled imagination. Mr. Manning, any theory until proven appears unbelievable to the ignorant. Dr. Hadaka's conclusions are based upon a life study. Now, let me restate that uh, turtles, porpoises, or scientifically, colonians, appear constantly in the most ancient texts. Now, for example, the uh, Greek Terabulia mythology that lived in fire, and uh, also the uh, Pyrabola of Pliny. What are you trying to prove, Doctor? Uh, that to a scholar, uh, there is more than just a casual basis for Dr. Hidaka's conclusions. Now, we know for a fact that a mere million years ago or so, the gigantic Kalasakalis Atlas plodded over the hills of northern India, the largest turtle ever known, a link to the more distant past. Now, how gigantic were turtles a hundred million years ago, or even two hundred million years ago? I'd like to discuss the conflicting newspaper report. So you and the eminent Dr. Hidaka conclude that this Gamera creature has been hibernating underground for 200 million years until now, when he decides to take a stroll. <laughs> oh, Dr. Contraire, you do have a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm simply advancing the theory uh, that the uh, great granddaddy of all turtles could have reappeared, released from its tomb of ice by the explosion of the bomb. Now, you may blithely ignore the statements of Dr. Hidaka, if you wish, However, I note that you haven't offered a more reasonable explanation for the total destruction of the Chittaramaru. If you'll get down from your pulpit for one minute, I'd like to ask you why Washington is so silent about all this. Or do you know more about it than the government? It would not be the first time Washington has kept the truth from the public, whether it be flying saucers or Gamera. Oh, so now you believe in flying saucers, along with 200 feet turtles that survive atomic bomb explosions. <laughs> Of course, we all know there really is a Santa Claus. Oh, Dr. Contraire, every time you bray, you make a bigger jackass of yourself. Jules, please, we're on the yes. Mr. Standish, I demand an apology. I've devoted my life to science. Gentlemen, you will get no apology from me, Contraire. I Jules, prefer to accept you. You have no scholarships to back your arguments. You have no arguments, Gentlemen. only invective. Read. Read, read, read Virgil's Lea, come on, read Paradise Lost, the ravings of a lunatic. Read of the Pyrites, the fire without and the frost within. Read, you ignorant ape. Read what intelligent men have written for thousands of years. What did he call please, me? Jules, please. He called me an ape? No, Gentlemen. Not merely ape. Quiet. Please Ignorant remember that we're on... Why, you? Remember that we're on the air. How dare you, you call me an ape? Where'd you get your diploma? Made in Japan? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that we run out of time. What do you want to do? Fast, fast. I hope you'll be with the guests all next week for another year. What do you expect to make out of this? I think that's the only one. I can't tell you who the guests will be. You'll be here and we'll... Would you care for a magazine or newspaper, sir? Oh, thanks. You're very kind. You're welcome, sir. Do you suppose there's any connection between this and what happened to the Shidori Maru, Doctor? I'm personally inclined to believe there is, yes. Although we don't know what happened to the ship. And then the radio blackout was that mere coincidence. And those reports General O'Neill told us about Dr. Hidaka. I think there is a connection between them somehow. I'm sure of it. And far-fetched as it seems, I'm convinced all this has something to do with the camera. You mean you believe such a beast might really exist? Of course, you're the scientist, and I'm just a layman doctor. But still, after all, except for the pilot's report and the Eskimo stone, there's really nothing to go on. Still, you can't just discount all that evidence. No, you can't. To do so is just dangerous and foolish. I'm afraid Gamera is real. A creature like that. Do you realize the amount of damage it could cause? Of course I do. In civilized areas, it would be capable of destroying whole towns. No. Mm. Well, you convinced me, Doctor, anyway. Let's hope General Arnold can convince the people in Washington. All right, Ms. Al, will you take this downtown this Mr. Jones type of the reporter that you did? Thank you very much. Another? Gentlemen? Sorry. 
I think we know why we're here. Let us not waste any time. General Arnold, we'd appreciate your report. Yes, sir. In addition to our initial findings, huge footprints, not unlike those of a turtle, leading from the area of the explosion to the exact spot of the destruction of the ship and also where Captain Foster of our air defense claims he saw the giant turtle. And during the last 13 hours, we have received reliable sightings of flying saucers, all fitting the identical description, starting over Nome, Alaska, proceeding to Saskatchewan, on to Toronto, London, Munich, Warsaw, and now Moscow. General, are you inferring that these sightings of UFOs are related to the reports of a giant turtle, a horrendous monster, right out of mythology? I'm inferring nothing, Senator. I'm reporting facts as we know them. And I might add that if UFO continues its pattern, it will be sighted next over Japan. I would estimate in five or six hours, or shortly before Dr. Hidaka is scheduled to land at Tokyo. Dr. Hidaka? Does he have some standing in world science councils? I've never heard of them. And I'm considered expert enough to head committees on nuclear fission and the like. This man should not be permitted to terrify the world with such distortions unless he is qualified to throw some light, some ray of light on these incredible reports. The point is that Dr. Hidaka is eminently qualified. I have examined all the reports including the transcript of the conversation between General Arnold and Dr. Hidaka, shortly after the zoologist was rescued by one of our helicopters. It is evident that he is a logical man and one who relies on facts. And from what he learned about Gamera as a result of his research and the evidence at the scene of destruction, I respect his conclusions. Whether his knowledge is derived from science or mythology, both extensive. Yet, Mr. Secretary, you must agree that until more logical explanations are available, the public should not be informed of this factual evidence of supposed footprints of supposed monsters. That decision was made by the Commander-in-Chief. I do know that if Gamera exists and did survive an atomic explosion, our world is about to face a calamity of enormous proportion. Well, I, for one, will not be coerced by this schoolboy myth of flaming dragons. And frankly, Mr. Secretary, I am disturbed. I am deeply disturbed to see that you have decided to go along with these alarmists. Are you, Senator? Well, from the facts, I am quite concerned. Deeply concerned. And so is the President. General Arnold. Has Dr. Hidaka offered any advice? No, sir, there was none he could offer until he knows more about the creature. Gentlemen, I think we're in for a time of it. General Arnold, you're relieved of all duties at the command post and will take this assignment, the Gamera operation. Report directly to me. Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, if you will excuse us, the president is waiting. The only three known survivors of the ill-fated exploration ship Chidori Maru, Dr. Eiji Hidaka, and his two companions will arrive in Tokyo tomorrow. Mr. Kurai. Ah, Mr. Oweda. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was on my way to see you. What's wrong? Has Toshio been misbehaving at school? No, not really misbehaving exactly. Here, look at this. Oh? Oh, no. Not more turtles. Yes. 
It would seem your brother has some sort of obsession about turtles, Miss Sakurai. Hm. I know how children are. They all love to collect pets and things. But this goes beyond that, so I thought I ought to see you. You mean it's interfering with his work? Huh? So much so that if he continues, he could be expelled. Of course, I understand how lonely it is for him in that lighthouse out there without any friends. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. It is very hard on a little boy his age. Yes, I know it is. Still, you will speak to him about doing better at school, won't uh -huh. you? And I'm so sorry he has caused you this trouble. Not Good at day. all. Good day. <sighs> Toshu and his silly turtles. Did you rest well, Father? Uh -huh. Do you like working at night? Well, there's not much need for lighthouses during the day, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> May I be excused? Toshu? Come here. What are you up to, Toshu? Are you going to feed your turtle? Oh, Father? Yes? Could you come here a second? Yes, what is it? Toshio, your sister and I understand your love for your pet turtle, but we want to talk to you about it. Come out here. Come, Toshio. You have to learn to make friends with people, as well as animals, Toshio. Your turtle is very nice, but you have to have other friends, too. Uh -huh. Set him free, Toshio. It would be better for him to return to the lake, and better for you to forget about turtles. Listen. If you promise to get rid of that turtle, I think Father will buy you something. Anything you like. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. Hmm? What would you like most, Toshio? Tell me. You want me to tell you what I would really like? What is yes, it, Toshio? Yes, tell us. What is it? To keep it. Toshio, I want you to set him free. If you don't, no boy or I'll do it for you. It would be a lot nicer, wouldn't it, if you went out yourself and let him go? Listen to me, Toshio. I realize that this may seem cruel. It is. But I'm doing it for your sake. You do understand, don't you? Uh-huh. Stay where I put you. Are you all right? No, it's not an earthquake. Look. <gasps> Camera. Yeah, Mama. Must be alive. Tojo. Tojo, come back. Tojo. Go, 
Toshio! 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 Toshio, wake up! Wake up! Wake up, son! Toshio! Are you all right? Sure, I'm all right. That big turtle, Gamera. Huh? Yes, but yes. he's gone. Apparently, he's gone back in the ocean. But how do I get down here on the ground? It was a miracle, Tosio. Gamera caught you and put you down. Huh? Gamera put me down? Yes. You're safe. You're safe. Thank goodness. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Hidaka. Dr. Doctor, Certainly. could you answer a few questions? Do you know what General Mono's no, plan is? I'm not even General Dean did speak Attention, to him, did you, sir? Please. Will Dr. Hidaka, yeah, arriving on Pan American Just Flight 819, please report right, to the desk for a message? Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Hidaka, ah, please Dr. report Hidaka. to the desk for a message. Thank you. Hello, Hidaka speaking. Uh -huh. Why, of course. I'm practically on my way. That was Professor Morasi in Tokaido. Gamera was seen there by a number of reliable in witnesses. Tokaido? Yes, we leave immediately. Yes, sir. The scout planes have not yet been able to locate Gamera, who is now definitely known to be on or near Hokkaido. Please stay tuned for continuing announcements and bulletins. It's dreadful, we isn't it? Where's Toshio? In bed? Be yes, he's had quite an evening. We all have. Necessary. out of there. I know why. I bet Gamera scared you, but he's gone. You feel that tremor? What's so unusual? We have them all the time here. Yeah, but not that rough. Ah. I've spotted Gamera. Uh, yes, he's headed for the geothermal installation. Oh, something must be wrong. I'm getting nothing but a high frequency noise. Another tremor. What's going on? What is it? An earthquake or a steam explosion? Good evening, Good evening. Captain. I'm Dr. Hidaka of Tokyo University. How do you do? I'm Kyoko Yamamoto, do do, his assistant. How do you do? And who is this? Oh, I'm Ayogi, Nito I'm Press. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave. The press is barred. Captain, just a moment. Uh, perhaps you could make an exception, Captain, in the case of Mr. Ayogi here. I feel he can make a worthwhile contribution to our efforts here. Uh -huh. He's been with us from the start, and I value his opinion very highly. Very well, sir. You can stay. Thank you. Explain the situation. Yes, at 19.30 hours, Gamora destroyed the lighthouse at Erima here. Then he disappeared. But then, within the last ten minutes, he was spotted near the geothermal power plant by aerial reconnaissance. Geothermal power plant? Uh, allow me to explain, Doctor. In a volcanic area such as this, there are many natural steam vents, or fumaroles, pouring out steam at about a thousand degrees. This tremendous natural energy has been harnessed to generate electricity. I see. Then there is superheated vapor at a thousand degrees issuing from the ground there. Exactly, sir. Oh. Excuse me, Dr. Hidaka. Steam that hot could kill a person instantly, could yes. it not? Then why can't we use that steam to destroy Gamera? I don't think it would work, Captain. You mustn't forget that atomic bomb generated far greater heat. Mm. And yet Gamera was able to survive. Uh, Dr. Hidaka, what is there that could stop Gamera then? Don't know. What's the maximum output of that gun? Uh, 350,000 kilowatts. 350,000. It might just work. Hmm. 
Red Scout calling Red Leader. Red Scout calling Red Leader. This is Red Leader. All units ready to attack. Stand by. Over. They are ready to attack now, Dr. Edaka. Captain, please hold off the attack for a while. Let's try my plan first. Yes, sir. Doctor, we're ready, sir. Yes, you're ready, Doctor. Oh, look, he's getting close to the wires. Ready? Close all circuits. Stand by for signal for full discharge. Look, it didn't even slow him down. Yes, this was a mistake. Captain, you'd better give the order to attack. Yes, sir. Open fire! Looks like he's eating it. Yes, he is. Captain, call off the attack. He's invulnerable, don't you see? Yes, sir. But what? Evacuate the area. At least all of the civilians. And arrange for a car at once. I must consult with Professor Morase urgently. Me. Good. actually ingested the fire? Yes. Hmm. Well, though legends of fire-breathing monsters like the chimera and dragons have persisted through the ages, still it's astounding to discover such a creature really exists. Yes, it is. Is Gamera really invulnerable, Professor? That I don't know. I've made one conclusion. Well, what? Obviously, his metabolism is not like ours. It is not only conceivable, but entirely likely that his cell structure differs radically from known life forms. For instance, silicon or metallic elements replacing carbon in his tissues. Precisely. Hmm. And that would explain his fire eating and his invulnerability to electric shock, heat, and concussion. Yes, I agree with you completely, Professor, but that doesn't bring us any nearer to a solution, does it? This pattern is very peculiar. They look like waves, and yet I don't think they... Yes, <sighs> still they're obviously symbols of some sort. I don't think they're rhythmic enough for waves. Doctor, it would be very useful if we could decipher this. So you, sir, our weapons do not really slow him down. Nothing short of an atom bomb will do any good. You're right. Put me through to General Yotobashi. Yes, sir. We understand your problem. 
And we will do everything we can. You can be assured of it. Thank you. We have just received a request from General Yotabashi for the use of our missiles. Up until now, every armament that we have provided them hasn't done any good. Our missiles? But that means getting approval of our allies. Mr. Secretary, I'm certain you're aware of our peace treaties and our international obligations. There isn't time, sir. I recommend that we act immediately. The destructive power of Gamera is beyond comprehension. He must be stopped now. And I say we must act in haste. I disagree with you, Senator. You may inform General Yotobashi, Dr. Hidaka, and Dr. Muras that our missiles are entirely at their disposal. Also, that our government will inform our ambassador to the United Nations to call for an emergency world meeting, because if our missiles fail to destroy Gamera, we will need world cooperation to determine our next line of defense. Mr. Secretary, have you consulted the president on these decisions? I have, and he has given me complete authority to implement any moves that we may take. General Arnold, get to it. Thank you, sir. Now, gentlemen, I think we'd better order in some lunch. We're apt to be here for some time. If you don't mind, Senator. You can expect my complete cooperation, sir. I expect nothing less, sir. Good evening, Professor Morase. Good evening. Situation about the same? Yes, sir. It's about to be changed any moment, though. The Americans are going to attack Gamera with nuclear missiles. Oh. A message from General Dean, sir. The American missiles are ready. Good. Clear the area. No, wait. Listen. The missiles won't do any good. It's more likely they'll serve as a source of energy. All right, if you say so. Well, what do we do instead, Doctor? Sir? Yes? What is it? We've completed the evacuation, sir, except for patrol units. Very good. Carry on. Professor Morase, what can we do? I don't know, since our most powerful weapons are useless. Dr. Hidaka, do you have any ideas? One. It's not even an idea, just a thought that occurred to me. We assume Gamera is invulnerable, obviously with a great deal of justification. But Gamera is vulnerable to cold. Remember, he was frozen in the ice until the bomb released him. Yes, of course. We must devise some means of freezing Gamera. Dr. Daka, Professor, the Army may have the answer. Our scientists have developed a freezing bomb to use in fires in nuclear reactors. Captain, you mean the Army has a bomb that will freeze things? Yes, though it's still in the experimental stage. I believe we can use it, although there is one serious drawback. The uh, gases that they use in this as a refrigerant dissipate in ten minutes. I see. Hmm. Still... These bombs, are there enough for our purpose? I believe there's an adequate supply, sir. This may be the answer. There isn't too much time. Do you suppose you can arrange it? It's urgent. I believe so, sir, yes. I'll get started on it immediately. This is Night Watch Patrol. Gamera is now leaving power plant, heading for mountains. It should be easier out there. Yes, it should. The planes will be able to attack from all sides. Gamera is now on Shishima Reach, heading for Devil Spring area. Roger. That's a big resort area. We have to attack now, before he gets there. Hurry, forget the bumps. Yes, sir. May I have your attention, please? The effect of the freezing bomb doesn't last very long. Ten minutes, which means that your work has to be completed within that time. So everyone, please remember, when you plant the dynamite, be quick, but be careful. We won't get another chance. Thank you and good luck. Shall I give the signal, Doctor? Please.
Look, it's working. Ah, uh -huh, you're right. His movements are getting slower. Look, a bomb is doing the trick. Dr. Hidaka, almost a minute is gone. Right, thanks. Come, doctor. I'm the devil. The camera's beginning to move. Do they have enough time left to plant that dynamite? How much time? Only three minutes. It's only One minute, Captain. Right. Clear out! Take cover! Hurry! Watch your fuses! Let's get out of here! Come on, the double! Hurry up! Come on! Move it out! Hey, watch your... 30 out. seconds! Hurry. Ten minutes are nearly up now. That's it. The time's up, Doctor. I know. Stand by. Yes, sir. Don't, Yoko. Don't worry. We're all ready. Fire! and he's on his back. Luckily. We've got him now, huh? Yes, because with Gamera, as with any other turtle, once he's on his back, he can't get up again. We're very lucky that your freezing bomb has worked as well as it did. Dr. Hidaka, I think we've done it. <laughs> Dr. Hidaka, it looks like your plan has succeeded. Yes. And in a month or so from now, he'll be just another zoological specimen. Uh-huh. He's putting his legs and head back in his shell. He knows his leg. That's what you call turning turtle. Amazing adaptation. Eskimo stone. Do you have it, Joko? Yes, sir. Right here. That's it. Now I understand the pattern, Professor Moratti. Those lines are meant to represent clouds, you see. A primitive but graphic attempt to show that Gamera can fly. Gentlemen, Gamera must be stopped. God knows where he'll strike next. So far, the American weapons have been completely ineffective, and the Japanese radar systems offer barely enough warning to evacuate the civilian populations. We must now work as one cohesive unit with one objective, creating a plan to destroy Gamera before he destroys civilization. General Arnold. Thank you, sir. Both Dr. Hadaka and Dr. Morass are convinced that Gamera is continually on the hunt for food. There is some chemical substance in our fuel that it needs to exist. 
possibly the same chemical substance it consumed over 200 million years ago. In the beginning, in the Earth's atmosphere, there was less than a small part of 1% of oxygen that we, with lungs, need to live. The other creatures existed on the sustenance of sulfur compounds in their seething earth. Now, as oxygen increased in the world's atmosphere, living things started to develop lungs. Now, Gamera is of the prior period, possibly the last survivor. This all came within the radii of our microscopes, but the existence of Gamera is living proof that they were not all single-cell creatures. Do you mean it literally eats fire? Yes. The beast actually eats fire. That's incredible. This may explain why he's most destructive when he's unable to satisfy his ravenous appetite and least destructive when he's gorging himself at some oil refinery or fuel reserve. Now, that may be the key to any plan that we come up with. If we can keep Gamera in one location long enough, we may gain the time we need. Thank you, General. This conference is now open to discussion. I recognize the representative from the Soviet Union. I've been authorized by my government to offer complete cooperation. Our nation's resources, scientists, and armed forces are at your disposal. The American ambassador. The United States government takes the identical position. To save time, gentlemen, I move for unanimous agreement. With all those in favor, say aye. 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 So be it. General Arnold, I understand that you and General Sokolovsky of the Soviet Command met with other military authorities and discussed an approach to the problem. Yes, sir, we did. We proposed a meeting of supply and fuel experts, and at the same time... Point of order. Chair recognizes the ambassador. My country has made its position clear. However, the decision of who is going to direct the military operations has not yet been decided. And until it is, we will in no way... There is no time for indecision or debate. Now, General Arnold has been on top of this situation since the trouble began. It is logical he direct the operation. May I remind the ambassador that it was General Arnold who gave the orders to shoot down one of my nation's aircraft. Which was flying over American territory at the time and carried the bomb and on exploding released Gamera. Our planes were forced into the area and besides, I want... Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. As the American ambassador has stated, we do not have time for debate. I recommend that there be a joint command under the direction of General Arnold of the United States forces and General Sokolovsky of the Soviet army. If the ambassadors have no objections, I suggest we put it to a voice. No objections. If General Arnold considers it practical. General Sokolovsky and I have worked together before. In Berlin after the war. I think we can still function as a team. All right. I'll agree to the proposal. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. aye. The ayes have it. It is a joint command. You may continue, General Arnold. Thank you, sir. After the fuel and supply experts have solved the problem of logistics, we have one plan that we think might work. We have discussed Plan Z with the Japanese authorities, and they agree it is the best of our alternative plans. Is that correct, sir? That is so. Plan Z is hope of the world. Gentlemen, Plan Z is open to discussion. Here's another one, from Paris. Gamma has been sighted all over the world, but only in the air. Yes. Apparently his experience with the freezing bomb frightened and disturbed him. Yes. But what happens when he gets hungry again? See who it is. Yes, sir. Come in, please. How do you do? I'm Nobuyo Sakurai, and this is my brother Tosio. How do you do? Good afternoon, sir. And I am Good the afternoon. doctor's assistant. These are the Sakurais from the Arima Lighthouse, Doctor. 
I asked them to come when I heard that they were in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Sightsee? Not exactly. You see, our home was destroyed. My. They're rebuilding everything now. And since there is no place nearby where we can stay, why, Toshio and I have come to visit our uncle here in Tokyo. Oh, yes, I understand. Yes, but as long as you are here, Toshio, you mustn't miss the sightseeing. See that? Right there? That is the Tokyo Tower. Dr. Hidaka? Yes? Is Gamera going to return? Well, let us hope that he doesn't return here. He's very dangerous. Gamera will save my life. I hope he's all right. He doesn't mean to be dangerous. He's just so big and clumsy, that's all. He goes overboard when it comes to turtles. I oh, like see. turtles, that's all. I bet Gamera is lonesome too, wherever he is. <laughs> Even a turtle doesn't like to be alone. If people were kind to Gamera, I bet he could be trained to be nice and quiet, like other turtles. I wonder where he is now. Good night, Toshio. I think Dr. Hidaka was very nice to explain everything, don't you? And at least you realize now how dangerous Gamera really is. Listen, I think tomorrow you and I should go sightseeing. Hmm? Uh-huh. Toshio? Sound asleep already. Good night. Little turtle. <laughs> A mysterious reversal of this morning's tide caused heavy flooding in the Sumida River, threatening to wash out large stretches of the shoreline. At the Kawasaki Wharf in Tokyo Bay, meanwhile, the mysterious tide, which was accompanied by severe local radio interference, caused this collision between two oil tankers. Fireboats and tugs at tremendous risk towed the burning ships from the oil storage docks, averting potential disaster. Now, here are pictures just released to us by the security forces of the geothermal power plant destroyed by Gamera last week. As you can see from these films, virtually nothing remains of the plant but shattered debris. So complete is the devastation caused by Gamera that cost estimates in the millions are based on total replacement rather than reconstruction. This was the scene earlier today at Haneda Airport, when the International Commission arrived. Representatives of 20 nations, including Professor Bauer of the United States, Academician Yanovsky of the Soviet Union, we interrupt to bring you live from the conference itself a statement by Dr. Hidaka. Uh, good evening. We are fairly certain that the disturbances earlier today have been caused by Gamera's return. You mean he's in the Tokyo area? Yes, unfortunately. But knowing that he is in Tokyo, gives us a chance to carry out the uh, United Nations uh, Plan Z for his uh, disposal. disposal. Yes. Will the projectionist uh, show the film, please? This is Oshima Island in Tokyo Bay, a dormant volcano used at present for a space installation and weather observatory. It is here that Plan Z will be carried out as soon as arrangements are completed. In the meantime, let us hope Gamera stays where we can find him and does no further damage. This is Haneda Control. Interference on the line. This is Haneda Control. We have lost our contact. We cannot reach you. Do not attempt to land. <gasps> there it is! Look! Camera! Camera is attacking! 
Special bulletin! Special bulletin! Gamma is attacking! Proceed to shelter immediately! Proceed to shelter! Gamma is attacking! Gamma is attacking! <laughs> The authorities have orders not in the immediately threatened areas between Kaheen and Tokyo Toshu, Bay to stay come and help off me, the please. streets to facilitate come on. rescue operations. I can't do it all by People myself. People in outlying areas will receive evacuation Toshu, instructions did you hear me? from their civil I defense leaders. I need some leaders. help. Do not attempt to leave on your Toshu. own. Only authorized rescue and fire Damn equipment around. and personnel will be passed. Don't do that. If you still have Listen running water, me. fill as you many large that. containers as possible so you have a supply on hand for drinking and smoking. We'll leave in five minutes. You see, Toshio Ichiro? I think he went to the river. The river?
refinery. O'Neill speaking. Yes, Dr. Docker. Yes, sir. I understand. We'll try. Listen, everybody. They won't be ready on Oshima Island for another 24 hours. That means we've got to keep rolling gas down there till the supply runs out. All right. Everybody ready now? Let them roll! Right, right, boss. Here goes! to be alive. Well, listen to me, kid. That was a pretty stupid stunt you pulled back there. It was not. I wanted to see Gamera, that's all. Uh-huh. Well, you saw him all right, didn't you? Is he hurt, sir? No, he's all right. There, now go home, will you? <laughs> he wanted to see Gamera. <laughs> <laughs> that Gamora will remain at the Kyashu refinery as long as we are able to feed him. However, our fuel supply is now dangerously low. Without an airlift, we cannot keep him there. We've anticipated this, sir. By nightfall, you will start receiving a steady flow of high-grade fuel oil. Excellent. Mr. Ambassador, my country is very anxious to know how you are coming along with Plan Z. Our men are working around the clock to complete the installation. Once we have determined a way to lead Gamera to the location, we are hopeful the plan will work. It must work, gentlemen. If it doesn't, Gamera might well destroy civilization as we know it. Yes, the conversion to Z plan must be completed in 24 hours. If it is humanly possible, it will be so. We know your people are doing all they can. Gentlemen, I am happy to report that thanks to the UN airlift of gas and oil, the Gamera has stayed put where he is at the refinery, and that Plan Z will be ready for execution tonight. Let's not congratulate ourselves prematurely, gentlemen. We have only oil and gas enough for the one attempt, and Plan Z must be put into effect at once, as soon as the evacuation of the civilians from Oshima is completed. Hurry up, this is our Come on, come on. Careful. Well, Ayagi, this is goodbye for now. You know, I guess. it doesn't hmm? seem right somehow, Doctor. Not after I've been with you all along. Uh huh. But the press is only being allowed to send a pool correspondent. I know. But that doesn't make it any less disappointing. <laughs> Good luck. Ayagi, go to Kawasaki. Dr. Murase is handling things there. Thank you. Not at all. Goodbye. So long. Testing. 
Dr. Hidaka should be at Oshima by now. Yes. And we'll be ready here as soon as they need us. Good. Let's hope our plan to get Gamera to Oshima works. Which one next? Yeah, pick up the slack. You want to dump it? All right, you ready? Take go away! Dr. Morase. Excuse me, sir. A young lady to see you. Excuse Mr. me, Mr. Kurai, what are you doing here? Please. It's Tosio. At 10, we were supposed to evacuate to Hachiochi. But Tosio's gone. He's been missing all day. Yes, sir. We have just finished unloading. Hey, where do you want the stuff? Take it up to the warehouse. Right? It is on its way. That should do it, I think. Well, don't you? Let me go! Let me go! All right, get down out of there. What's that? What's going on? We just found a stowaway, sir. A stowaway? Boy, it's Toshio. You shouldn't be here. I'm sorry. I came here to see Gamera, that's all. Come on. You can stay, Toshio. But you have to behave, understand? Mm-hmm. I'll take care of Toshio, doctor. You hungry? Starving. It's time oh, to begin. Good. Is everything ready here? Yes, good. Doctor. But, Dr. Dacker, are you sure the scheme of yours will lure Gamera to Oshima Island? Practically certain. Assuming, of course, his mm. behavior pattern remains unchanged. You may begin your tanker operation. Everything's ready on Oshima Island. Dr. Dubber, get those hoses out there! Don't bunch up. Give yourselves room. Yes, as soon as it's ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yes, that's fine. Goodbye. Mr. Kura, good news. Toshio's safe on Oshima Island. Oh, my. Toshio's all yes. right. Yes, Professor. Phase two can begin. The ships are here. Yes, as soon as you are ready. You are? Begin immediately. Mm. Thank you, Doctor. All right, General, they're ready. Thank you. Sergeant, proceed. Squad, post! Open fire! He's moving. It's going to work. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, Naboyo. Oh. Hello, Dr. Yadaka. It works. Gamera is following the path of fire to Oshima. So we did it. He's on his way here. Do you see Gamera? Yes, no, not yet. We're Just ready. the fire. Thank you, Professor. Camera there yet? Phew, for heaven's sake. Typhoon warning. Doctor, listen. Attention! Typhoon warning! A small typhoon originating east of Otori Island has changed course and is approaching the Tokyo area. All shipping is warned to take shelter immediately. 
High wind, rain squall. Doctor Hidaka, who is this trouble for us? Take all necessary. I think we're all right. Once camera is here. There is a threat of volcanic activity. Camera! Camera is high! Go! 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 This blasted typhoon. Can't anything be done, Doctor? Might I suggest, Doctor, that we use some of the fuel from Plan Z. It's not practical. Why not? Because if we did, there wouldn't be enough fuel left over for the plan itself. See? If Gamera sees that, he'll come back, won't he? You're right, Tayagi. Men, light the fire! Hurry! He goes and there's nothing we can do about it. And so close to success, too. Ah, rotten luck. the plane. Probably Professor Morassi. Yes. Ten minutes and counting. The eruption has subsided, sir. Not even a live volcano could keep me away today. Yes, sir. Tighten your belt. No, boy. Good morning, Professor Morassi. Did you have a no, pleasant boy. flight? 
Dorsey, you had me scared half to death. Call me later. Right now, we got to hurry. Or else we miss everything. Five Come on. minutes and counting. Wait till you see this. Look. <gasps> it's incredible. Professor Morassi. Ah, Dr. Hidaka. Everything's going well, it seems. Very well, indeed. Excellent. Stand by, please. The count is now ten seconds and holding. All set? Yes, sir. Good. Ready ignition and start off step two. Begin step two. Hatches, flares out! Hatches open, flares out! Ready with the capsule? Whose capsule? <laughs> Activate energizer. Stand by. Resume count. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. This is United Nations Radio. At this very moment, the Plan Z rocket with Gamera aboard is starting on its long journey to Mars. Plan Z, a triumph of scientific achievement, is the result of the combined efforts of all the nations of the world. Thus, through international cooperation, a major threat to civilization has been averted. Well, Joe, you did it. Well, the three of us saw the beginning and the finish, eh? Uh, only I didn't get a picture. <laughs> Where's he going, Dr. Hidaka? He's on his way to Mars. So I guess that he'll still be lonely, eh? I think so, Dr. Hidaka. But when I grow up, I'm going to be a scientist like you. And then I'll go to Mars in a rocket. <laughs> I see. <laughs> 